Hello everyone, welcome back to Elsie's Plays Dead Cells. Um, we have just done a daily run. Um, I don't know if you just saw it or if it was no, maybe a bit less recent than that for you. I honestly have no idea what sort of schedule I'm keeping. Just trying to not uh, upload the same video, not well, not upload, but like I'm trying to not use the same video twice. Not um, not put two episodes of the same series up at the same time. We've got a few series going on already as it stands, so there's kind of no point in um, you know, flooding everybody with just the one jobby here because. Yeah, there's a decent old Minecraft, modded Minecraft series, Stone Block 2. Go and have a check out that if you've never seen modded Minecraft before, want to know what it's about, or uh, want to see how poorly a person can, in fact, perform modded Minecraft um, quests. It's a quest based Minecraft. How cool is that? Uh, where is the. I can see the. Ch must be this way. We're going to try and get through this without taking any damage because that's the way you play this game. I'm really warm. I'm sorry, but um, I am. We have uh, started ourselves on the... Yes, this is definitely going to be a red run. Uh, apologies for that, but it is my first one back in quite a while, so I, I feel like it's nice to have... It's like a, it's like pickled ginger after sushi, you know? you got to give yourself the opportunity to actually to get back into the swing of things. It's not necessarily that easy. I've uh, been away. <laughs> I was going to say to the detriment of my throat, but apparently that was not necessary. My throat said it for me. Uh, 21 kills without getting hit. Keep going, keep going. There's the sewers. All right, then let's get nine more dudes McDooded and then we can go. I'm so sweaty. This is not funny. I might have to go into it. I don't even know if the heating is on. I'm just dying. How are you alive? Uh, I'm probably going to avoid doing anything that yeah, say involves um, uh, like obstacle traps because I have a horrible feeling that if I if I try to do that, I'd end up taking a piece of damage against essentially a stationary enemy. You gonna? Can I have those? <coughs> Please. Thank you. It's a good thing you don't have mana that you know you have to use in order to do that. Right trigger. Twenty-seven. Um. Where was I? I've come back from holiday. That's allowed. Don't judge me. It was a, a half holiday because... <laughs> sniff, sniff. Oh, I'm so poorly. Sniff, sniff. I'm not well sniffed it. Have mercy. Um, I... 29, come on. Uh, I went courtesy of work on a bit of a jolly. As they used to call them in the old days. It wasn't really a jolly. Oh, I need to write up what happened. Uh, I went to a thing called Fosdrim, which is the free and open source developers. European meetup. Uh, nerd. Yeah, all right, sure. You're a nerd. Uh, what is that? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. It is uh, it's the European meetup for free and open source developers. Look, you know what it is. If you don't know what it is, I will cut you some slack. I don't want to sound entitled or like, I, hate, I don't want to be a gatekeeper, okay? You, you're allowed to not have heard of any of these things. Free and open source software is the sort of software where the, excuse me, the mushroomologist. I don't want vampirism, go away. Um, much of the software that many people use, including Microsoft Windows, is what we call licensed software. All software is licensed technically. I'm going to go to the promenade of the condemned because you can't stop me. Um, Licensed software, we mean to be uh, restrictively licensed. That means that in order to use it, you have to have a license to do so. Which one do we want? Oh, these are all bad. I'm going to go with the sword just because it's a huge upgrade on basically what we're already doing. Plus, um, bleed is an effect. And we may have to even have synergy yet. Not yet. Um, I mean, we do want a thingy, but... Uh, okay, fine. Um, free and open source software is... Oh, I forgot we did this, actually. We'll save this for next time. Let's put them in here. We unlock this and then just sell it when we get it. Uh, it free and open source software is... Go away. Go, go away. There we go. Um, I actually quite like this. When you... Well, the source code of software is the... 
plain text, so to speak, um, code that people write in order to compile down into the thing that you eventually run in, in, in the various places where you do indeed run things like uh, on, on Windows or whatever you're using. So the, this, this game has source code and you're not allowed to see it because this is a restrictively licensed product, which is why we paid for it. Uh, this one, please. So, I don't need it. Well done. Couldn't take any damage, obviously. That's why you've got a new weapon. Um, free and open source software is the opposite. There are some open source games, in fact, so uh, probably maybe check those out. If you're interested, there's a open source game engine as well called Godo. That's one of the things that we saw whilst we were there. It's very much like Unity. If you've heard of Unity... Oh my god. <laughs> this is going to be a day of explanations. Um, oh, shite, that went really well. <laughs> um, Unity is a piece of software that helps you write games. It contains lots of the uh, the sorts of things that are generally required when writing a game. For example, handling of inputs, different types, mm, different types of inputs like uh, the, the controller and the mouse and keyboard and that sort of thing. It helps you draw things to the screen, which is very important. It helps you use 3D acceleration. It helps you. It's got all these um, utilities for all these various different things. Might be tempted to upgrade my infantry bow at some point, but it's going to be a long time before I want to replace my blood sword. Um, what was I saying? Uh, yes, correct. The uh, Godo is a. I, mean, I think it's written in C sharp, which kind of bothers me because C sharp as a language is general purpose, but there's like this weird sort of. It's like Java. It's got this VM interpreter thingy where you have to install. A C sharp runner thingy that that does jobs for you. Is that a better? Yes. Uh, they're, they're just like Java is. Write once, run nowhere. <laughs> um, it's a famous example of a Java application. Of course, it's Minecraft. You have to install the right version of Java in order to be able to run Minecraft. You don't have to install the right version of Java, but there are, there are supported and unsupported versions of Java that you can use for Minecraft. So. Oh, I kind of expected <laughs> behavior. Um, there's a, a runtime called Mono, which is the uh, open source version of whatever it is on C Sharp. Whatever it is that C Sharp runs on on Windows, but of course, if you're not using Windows, you kind of get to sit at the back of the bus, so to speak. Um, I don't think I want this. Anyway, Godo. Around games, so the sort of thing that you see at um, a place like Fosden is uh, lots and lots of software um, things. There's no real, um, there's no real general-purpose term. You know, if there's always going to be uh, lots of like it's not just open source software, but open source hardware. Open source hardware is where you get given the plans to make the hardware yourself if you really, really want to. Um, obviously, that's more difficult than compiling software because to compile software, all you need to do is download the compiler, which itself is generally free and open source, right? So it, it kind of bootstraps itself. It's dead easy. Meanwhile, in the uh, non-permissively licensed world, you've got things like these video games that you all like to play. Windows, Photoshop, all those things. There's always open source equivalents. I guess the most famous, the most likely open source software that people watching this will have heard of, apart from... I know a lot of people already use things like Linux. You've actually probably all heard of Linux now, come to think of it, but... Not this one, please. Uh, is OBS. OBS is what most, or well, many, let's say many, uh, streamers use to record uh, for YouTube and Twitch, so... There's a good chance that you'll have seen that. It's an open source. It's the open source, the open broadcasting software, right? So, oh, well done. Uh, you can see the source code for OBS if you look on GitHub, which is where most source code these days is kept. I do not appreciate this at all. So, how about you have that? And we'll see if we uh, still have that annoyance. No, we don't. Well done. Um, GitHub is pretty good, even though it's owned by Microsoft. Uh, it is primarily for the sharing of free and open source software. Not just sharing, but the collaboration. It's a collaborative thing. So your uh, your OBS, for example, is going to exist somewhere on 
GitHub. It's that easy to find because you can Google it. Can I stomp anything else like this statue? No. I just feel like more stuff in this game would be being destructible. You. Um, if I go quiet, I'm concentrating, okay? Avoid the elite. We don't need to fight that. And. We've got a pretty decent amount of um, kills under our belt. So let's try and keep that going. Full steam. So be a little more, bit more careful. We managed to get uh, 40, which is a decent number. And. We have a. There we go. We have a teleporter to the end. So as soon as we hit 60, presuming we are able to. Uh, we can come right back here and just leave. <laughs> Let's do that. Uh, avoiding this elite. Let's go and get this scroll of power, which we've walked straight past for some reason. I don't think we've even been down here. Yeah. So yeah, free and open source software is a big deal in the entire world. Um, everyone is using some form of it. Including the, you know, the, the restrictively licensed software that you're probably... <sighs> It was risky. Probably uh, playing right now or watching me play right now, indeed, for sure. Um, they will be compiled with what is almost certainly going to be a free and open source project. Um, many games are written in C or C++, I think. Uh, lots of them are written in C Sharp. Which, uh, I think Unity is in C Sharp as well, actually. So Godo and Unity. Yikes. Nice. That's exactly what I wanted to have. I have, uh, I was going to say I haven't, but I have, is what I mean to say, completely forgotten that I have the uh, other skill thingy here. So we can quite happily uh, shut down the, the bleed maker. Oy, I know what you're like. And um, another couple of kills under our belt there. We're on 56. Don't screw this up now. You know what you're like. You're going too fast, bro. Okay, cool. <laughs> Leave me alone. Let me out. Oh, no. Oh, is there a, maybe a thing behind it so we can teleport somewhere else and just kill a couple of enemies? Yes. Um, I see a crossbow, actually. Good aim for that. See if we can find a... F we need three more enemies to just be alive, and none of them is allowed to be... Uh, oh, okay. Um, the elite, if you don't very much mind. So we're going to be very cautious as we wander along here. Here's one. That's three. All at once. Almost tempted to ignore you. That's what it was. Um, I was learning a lot of things. One of the big things we talked about, in fact, was the tall network, which. Uh, prison depths or upstairs? I don't know. Uh, the Tor network is a big network of computers on the internet, obviously. That's where you get computers. Yeah, ramparts. That's where you want to go. Um, heavy crossbow too. <sighs> no. I really like the infantry bow. I want a game. I want, a, uh, I want one that I can do well on today. So let's, let's go for that. Also, incidentally, what's over here? I forget. i have a quick look. Um, it's a privacy thing, actually. Oh, ossuary. Fine, 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 fine. Let's just go in here. Uh, I think it, I feel like it just skips a couple of um, levels that we don't necessarily want to do. It, it's a privacy thing. Most people think of it as a. Uh, at least when I was a kid, the tall network was. Uh, it was almost a scary. Ooh, interesting. Less damage received, golden cells, inflammable oil. We don't really have a burning effect. Do that. I'm going to take Swarm and replace the cleaver that I'm just not using. That seems good. Uh, we actually have more survival than red right now, and that's because we found two scrolls that wouldn't let us take red, in case you're wondering. Uh, the Tor Network I used to think of as a, a scary sort of criminal element of the of the world. Um, like, it was, in theory, used for 
it's just um <laughs> being naughty, you know? Like it was it was part of the underworld of the internet. Oh, that's good. But uh it is not. In fact, I watched a uh, was it one of the TED Talks I was talking about last time was explaining that the oh they, I told you in fact it was um Bill S. Preston Esquire, Alex um Alex Winters from the good old days when films were still good, telling us how the Tor network is not actually that good for illicit deals. <laughs> um it was it's it, you know it's much better served as a uh, as what it is for which is privacy and one of the things that people always go on about um, and, and that they were talking about at the, at the uh, event here was that people say you have nothing to fear if you have nothing to hide right um, which is absolute nonsense uh, because everybody has something to hide yeah and if you don't believe me then please leave in the comments below your credit card number and pin <laughs> and the three digits on the back of the card because if you have nothing to hide then of course you'd be perfectly happy to give those away because there is nothing to hide right why, why would you be hiding stuff the idea that people who are hiding stuff are doing things wrong it's not just absurd and ludicrous and blah blah blah, but it is extremely damaging just in general. You know, it's uh, it it, it hurts the world, <laughs> which is a strange thing to say, but uh, it is quite true. Oh, you didn't roll past this dude. That's a bit rude, isn't it? Got hit. That's okay. Uh, at this point in the game, kind of not really expecting that we're going to get through these levels, doing sixty things without taking damage. It's a little bit uh, unlikely. Plus. Previous two uh, rewards for not getting hit. Uh, they weren't that great. I mean, I've still got them. Message left in the story. Soldiers leaving them. Oh, we've seen this one. Someone get back up. You can't burn them, they get back up. Uh, but I'm burning them, so it does work. What was I saying? Uh, yeah. Privacy versus, like the idea of hiding because you're being bad very very clear distinction so the tour network is designed to improve privacy especially in those situations where privacy is being undermined constantly by eg the british government you know there's what was that <laughs> you weird little leaper dude um so what it does is it anonymizes your internet traffic by basically every time you do something it routes all your data through several um, random essentially places on the internet so everything you do goes through three other people uh, which as you can imagine if you can't tell where your traffic is going to come from uh, and of course other people can't tell where your traffic is going to come from we hope you can see how that improves your privacy because if you can't be tracked, then you can't be tracked. It's just <laughs> right there. Um, the idea is to mask things like your IP address and, and, and your essentially basically your IP address. But um, there's a lot of really interesting ways that you can attack people online that are not things that you might consider just by having a broad understanding of how the internet works, which is generally everybody on the internet has what's called an IP address. Um, either B4 or B6. <laughs> the B6 is just a, a new version because we ran out of we ran out of numbers. Too many people on the internet, so we made a new one which has more numbers in it. And you know, all in all, you get uh, a number, and that is your address on the whole internet. And if you let people see it, then they can connect to your computer. Right? That's very obviously uh, an attack for... Yes, we're now on red again. Although I can't have a notice. Oh, no, still four and five. <laughs> um, your IP address. People can find your IP address and they can connect to your computer by IP address. And therefore, if your computer is not sufficiently protected, 
they can get you. This is no good. We don't want people to get you. That's the whole point of privacy on the internet. But that aspect of it is more for you know, personal safety than necessarily privacy. Because if you have a virus or something like that, that is one of the, the vectors by which you can be a victim of um, your uh, common or garden being uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, stolen identity. And it can be a victim of identity theft. Because if somebody has a thing on your computer that just sends them all the stuff that you're doing on your computer, then immediately they can start to attempt to be you just by there's so many things. There are so many things that you can do on your computer that identify you. Right? Um, and it's not just... It's not just people who are doing naughty things. You need to be anonymous on the internet. As I've mentioned, if you don't believe me, just give me your credit card details. Because if you don't think that internet privacy and security is sensible, then you are going to be the victim of credit card fraud. It's as simple as that. It's not even a question. Um, we have firewalls, we have better browsers than Windows Explorer, even Windows Microsoft Edge. I don't know. I have no information to me right now whether the Edge browser, which is Microsoft's latest offering, uh, is worse than the... Uh, or better than Internet Explorer was for internet privacy and security. However, track records aren't meaningless. So, we are going to continue to assume that Microsoft have no uh, remote ability to, uh, to protect you on the internet, even though they are trying. You can see that they're trying, and that's okay. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, very trying in fact but until they uh, until they can show me that they've done well and uh, it's you know pissing in the wind I don't care I'm not going to use Microsoft's browser because most of my computers don't run Windows <laughs> okay uh, so also I don't understand why browser share is that big of a deal the only reason that your browser being uh, having a large market share can be remotely interesting to you. It's because you might want your um, why is it and why is it stuck down there? Leave me alone. <laughs> it's because you put something in your browser that makes you money. Which is another thing. Like no one really cares about these. Advertising does my head in. And it doesn't do my head in because it's everywhere. I, like many people of my sort of general generation, so to speak, um, sort of ignore adverts. Do you ignore adverts? Let me know. I am. I generally ignore adverts. Not just in. Oh, it was just. No. Uh. Should we explore more? Just go. Could just go. I'm not, a, I'm not averse to just leaving right now. Let's talk about the game a little bit. How's it going? I think it's going all right. We took a lot of damage on this floor. Um, but uh, it's a big floor, you see. So I'm the reason I'm going to do more stuff is that there's every chance that we could get something great. Um, it is a big floor. It does have a lot of things on it. We skipped to it intentionally. We could have gone through another couple of floors, right? Oh, I did a burping taste of sweet and sour chicken. Uh, for example, right here. Bit of extra damage and stuff. No worries there. Um, you're... Yeah, I, mean, I think we've got a, a good thing going, but we're going to need to continue to do well. I thought you were not going to stop. Uh, in order to actually succeed, obviously. Um, and I don't think we're going to be able to get too much out of the end of the game with this setup. Don't like this. I'm gonna wait for my uh Ooh, ah, ee, ah. Back. I 
not really using my sword as much as maybe I could. <laughs> it's only my fallback weapon when my uh, amazingly powerful bow has no value left to me. I.e. ammo in it. Shop. No. Don't have any money. Why is there so little money in this game today? I don't know. Good question. Yeah, I am. Um... My privacy is a big problem. I mean, I was saying that... Uh, I mean, I was giving you a... What oh, plus? Uh, up against the wall. I don't know. I'm happy with my blood sword, to be honest with you. Um, it's a big problem because, as I was saying, those are just the attacks that you can get from, from IP address. Uh, if your computer's IP address is known to anything... That could theoretically, one way or another, use that IP address to uh, connect. It'll basically, it can try to connect to your computer. If your computer's not listening, that's fine. But it can still try. So if your computer is listening, that's bad and you should feel bad. You know? Nice. Um, that was good too. Chest. Hurrah. I see a fire grenade. I don't see if it's any good. This is a better one? Five versus two. Yes. <laughs> I need to keep our Bernie. Oh no, that's the Bernie. Poison target. We don't have any poison, we might want to reforge those modifiers. Plus we get to upgrade it. Um That's just that. So like <laughs> this is why we fall down the middle. Well Do I want this? Maybe? Nah. There's a thing in the wall. I, I have no intention of going back to get that because who cares? Let's have a look down here. Um, yeah, if your computer's not listening, I mean, that's a firewall. Firewalls are things that stop people connecting to your computer and stops your computer connecting to other computers that it doesn't recognize. Which is why the first time you try and play Minecraft, it can't connect. Because Windows Firewall is saying, do you want to allow Java to connect to a random thingy? And most of the time, the answer should be no. And rightly so, because who the heck knows? It was one of the unsafe things about Java, <clears throat> is that if you have it on your computer and somebody gets a Java application on your computer, how do you know, like, what assurance do you have that that application is not being run somehow? Uh, well, the assurance is that if it tries to do anything nefarious, hope your operating system goes, do you want to allow this? And then you can say no or obviously yes it's a bit of annoyance when you have spent 10 minutes launching modded minecraft and then <laughs> um you find that oh this could be good tap to critical we might do that on the this is, these are next run things we've got a terrible run and we don't get anything good on the way through start putting these in Although, we've got more and more good things. <laughs> uh, we can upgrade this. I did want to reforge these. Maybe. If we, if we can burn the things. I mean, these aren't really... Our elemental synergies are not great, but we're running out of money really, really fast. <laughs> Let's keep going. Oh, yeah, that's what we want. That's really good, actually. Um, they can identify you by your traffic. And this is a big deal. This is why websites are uh, secure, HTTPS. If it doesn't say HTTPS or have the little symbols in your browser, this is a PSA, you listen to me. If it doesn't have those symbols in your browser, stop using that website. It's bad for you. Um, they... There is no way of guaranteeing that the browser that you're using, the, the website that you're using, uh, is guaranteeing your, your privacy online. Oh. I am reasonably sure I can beat this guy without taking damage in the right situations. So, uh, that's not how you do it, by the way, if you're wondering. You're going to do the jumpy thing? Nope. The flamey thing. Hey! Genuinely, didn't think that was going to happen. 
Um, there's a thing, there's a theoretical attack called, uh, uh is it traffic fingerprinting? There's a, it's a different thing from website fingerprinting, uh, which is, uh, no, 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 this is website fingerprinting, I, I, I think I might be speaking loudly because, help me, um, I, I have forgotten how to fight this particular loot. Got lost. All right. Pay attention to the attacks that he's doing. Okay. Stop taking damage. We, we, we will beat him. It's not like we've regressed that far, but come on. All right. Okay. Uh, website fingerprinting is where, in theory, so the way a website tends to work in this day and age is that um, your things like JavaScript and, and the CSS, the styling sheets, um, there's several of them, you know, there's background tasks, there's loads, <laughs> Let's just say that. there's loads of things that the website will load in the background or independently of the actual web page itself, especially in places like Facebook and Google and all these places where there's um, magical behavior that it's not just a, a plain website with buttons on it, right? It's not just click, clicking, even one, even those ones. Um, I guess a slant, some blue sanctuary. <laughs> I thought we were going to the, uh, the, uh, sepulchre, actually. Never mind, never mind. Wow, actually. That was really good. Well, that wasn't very good. That's okay. The trail of flames turns out to be amazing. So there you go. Excuse me, I have an itchy nose. Um, website fingerprinting basically means that whenever the browser goes ahead and requests all these um, extra pieces of information, you know, the, 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 the JavaScript from Google Analytics, the, the JavaScript for Google Maps, the data for Google Maps, the Facebook JavaScript, you know, all these myriad things. Um, it, it's going to do them in the same order every time and it's going to be obvious from watching what your computer is doing <coughs> excuse me <coughs> oh, excuse moi see if you play move your ass out the way um, that you're doing those things right um, because websites are going to look the same over and over again if they serve the same things in the head and the foot and join the page same sort of images same javascript same css that sort of thing same external uh, connections then we know or at least we can theorize what you're visiting what you're doing this is a problem especially in certain places in the world where these things are banned you know, if, if Facebook is banned in your country and you're visiting Facebook, you know, your government could, in theory, use that information. And I know that I'm sounding a little bit uh, 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 hysterical, you know, sensationalist, but this is a sort of sensationalism that is true, okay? Uh, there is sensationalism that is not true, and we have the Daily Telegraph if you want to read that. And there is sensationalism that is true, which is the sort of weird things that you can do with information. Oh, that's my alarm going off. How long has that been happening? I can't hear through my headphones, so I do apologize. Hope you are enjoying that. Um, sensationalist sort of uh, is scary, okay? Of course, I mentioned that that was, I was, that is not in the catchment. There's a, there's room. There's room for a person, a skinny man, but a man nonetheless. Stop. Things like that. Do bother me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. NGL. Uh, that that was really annoying. I wish that hadn't happened. I think it was on purpose that there is one teleporter and then you have to go back to the start or uh, you know do it all again. Um, the uh, yeah, that's that's a theorized attack. Uh, a vector of attack is important for tracking you. And the problem is being tracked on the internet, right? Um, most people don't worry about 
Well, things like Google, for example. Google have tracking cookies, uh, as they're known, which are little bits of information that get left on your computer whenever you visit a website. And then Google knows enough about you such that when you return to Google, or any site that's using Google Ads, uh, it will advertise things that are... Uh, pro Ooh, two blueprints in one shot. You really, really, really have to get out of here now. <laughs> There's no, no two ways about this. We are leaving. Let's see if we can make it happen. Uh, yeah, it's scary. Okay. Um, most people don't worry about too much. In fact, some people appreciate the fact that they're uh, advertising. It's relevant. And I can understand that too, but if you're, like I say, part of my generation, you're probably already ignoring all advertising that gets flung your way mercilessly anyway, so it's probably a little bit less relevant to you than, than maybe uh, to other people. But, I mean, that's one of the other things to point out is that it's, it's fine for you, yeah? You're a millennial or similar. You're tech savvy. You know what you're talking about. You know what you're doing. Um, what your grandparents, if... You know, they're still alive. Okay. Hopefully they are still alive. I, uh, hold on. Hold on. I do like this, don't I? I'm not gonna... We're gonna get rid of the infantry bow? Because I'm not sure if it's any... Oh, I've just realised how good this is versus our favourite enemies. Um, the, the golems. This is astounding versus the golems, I seem to remember. Is this the one that has no effect? No, so you can continue to do damage with it. Uh, no, 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 no. This is not the time for your shenanigans and hijinks and tomfoolery! Sorry, shouted. Wake up, everybody. Uh, how dare you fall asleep during my videos? Um, what about, you know, your, your parents, your grandparents? What about your... 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 Uh, you know, what about... Right, let's, let's uh, stop picking on the, the commonly picked on, which is old people for being bad at computers, but what about, like, um, your... Uh, your friend with... Who's, uh, your blind friend, okay? What about your hard of seeing? What's the term? You know what I mean. You know, what if your friend requires assistive technologies? What if your friend has learning disability or something like that? What if your friend is gay and you live in the sort of place where that's not okay, right? There's many. <laughs> my point here. There's so many. Unless you float in the air and inflict damage on enemies below you. We've used this one. This is essentially the version. I should have sold the bow. What's what friend? Damage. Target's covered in oil. I think we will go for the more interesting and exciting one first. But yes, I'm very pleased with getting those two things unlocked. If we die on this, we have already won, okay? <laughs> We've already won. Uh, I have 100% damage taken, so I'm completely eradicating that immediately. And now more damage at full HP. Uh, we don't have a crit thingy anymore. So we're not going to do that one. Stop giving me crit. Okay, fine. I don't mind biters. <laughs> I would rather you didn't uh, keep that critical hit. We don't have anything they can crit. We're just going to have to beat the heck out of everything. Which is, I, I guess, the problem with not having the infantry bow anymore is that now we can't uh, crit the things. But I'm hoping maybe we can pick up some sort of... One five plus. That's a five plus plus, so heck you. Um, I'm hoping we can pick up uh, basically a better... Um, a better melee weapon that does have crits again, so it's not uh, it's not completely unlikely. So that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Uh get off. Stop! <laughs> this thing! The worst thing ever. I don't think I needed to kill that because it wasn't in my way. I'm doing badly right now. So let's, um, let's focus a little bit. It's not the end of the world. Also, did that get me again? 
I don't think it did. What got me? I'm very confused. The, the biters make things a little bit less predictable because the enemies are attacking the attack the biters before they attack you. But if you're in the way trying to hit them back, they, they're constantly turning around and trying to get the biters that are biting them back. A letter. A letter on the desk. Maybe this desk belonged to the guardians of this tower? Day one, 45, 32. Day one, 19. Just lots on day one. <laughs> okay. Big sword? No. Fine. No. Um. Yeah, what about these people who aren't... Like, even... Um, poor vision. So even, as if that's a... A minor thing to have. But you understand. Um, if your friend has... Poor vision, if your friend has learning difficulties. I don't want... I'm, on, I'm trying to equate those two things. Uh, except in the literal sense that they have uh, similar effects on things like the internet. Because... Uh, a person with limited vision would not necessarily be able to see what's happening. They, they could be many, many nefarious things on a website designed to attack people who have uh, accessibility requirements, right? It's almost impossible not to think of a way you could do it because the problem in this immediate situation is that accessibility is hard to do, right? Accessib think about that. If accessibility on the web is hard to do, it stands to reason that inaccessibility is easy to do. In fact, many websites that you've seen are probably not accessible to a lot of people who have difficulty seeing or using a mouse, for example. You know, it's not just sight that you need in order to uh, be, be uh, a user of the web, right? There's, there's many... <laughs> There's many, even small things that can go wrong with the person that you can probably uh, rely on in 90% of your users, but in that last 10%, they're going to be struggling. They're not going to be able to use your website because of things that you've done wrong. You know, people who use screen readers for whatever reason. Um, and it doesn't have to be just because you're hard... You know, you've got a... Uh, Side problems. It could be. I, mean, I can't think of another reason. But um, reading problems. There's another one. I mean, it's it comes under the category of side problems. But you might not. You might be able to see perfectly well. You might be able to understand images and stuff that are presented to you. But you have maybe a severe form of dyslexia, or maybe you have to have a mild form of dyslexia. But you're having a bad day, right? Ooh. Um. Making an accessible website is really hard. Uh, if you want the website to have everything that you envisioned of it. I think that's probably a thing to note. Uh, you can make it. It's easy to make uh, an accessible, accessible website, but it might not have the thing. Like, this game is not accessible. You know, how many people do you know on the internet right now who can't play various games because of motion sickness? I, I, I can think of a couple. This game, uh, 3D games, um, any games, right? How many people do you know who don't have the geospatial awareness to play Tetris? Uh, I bet there's a few. Games are not accessible things. But they're, they're, for entertainment purposes, they're not trying to espouse some information. They're not there to... Um, I mean... They're there to enrich your life, I suppose, in specific sense, but like, there's so many websites that are necessary for people. Like, maybe the NHS website. Uh, things like that. You know, people who need access to various services, and, and, and there are, there are... There's information on there, there's, there's email addresses and, and contact addresses, and booking forms and things like that, all of which, when done correctly, will allow people with various difficulties to do tasks that previously they couldn't do, just because you have made a website that is capable of doing so. Right? Uh, for example, what about phone anxiety? That's a big thing of our generation. Uh, and I think it's because we don't need them anymore. And we've got over phones. They're not important to, to everyday life. Everything must go 
Start charging less then. What the heck? Good grief, mate. Uh, do you, <laughs> there's many, many things that you can probably think of that, that you could... Uh... Nice. So there's the crits that we still have. I forgot about that, actually. So there is a, there's one way of enabling the crit bonus that we, that we have, but it's kind of a, a bit far-fetched, if you don't mind me saying so. Um, there's, there's, accessibility is a big deal, right? It's not just about catering to people who are a minority and have problems that a lot of people might just say are being whiny, okay? <laughs> and honest, trust me, this is not unheard of. Okay. The, the attitudes of people towards users on the internet is deplorable in some situations. You can almost imagine that it's... Um, excuse me for sniffing so much, but... Hey, what do you want me to do? Not sniff. Uh, it's like the... If you've watched the IT crowd or... Um, there's another similar one. I'm trying to think of it. I think it's another one, Noel Fielding. And if you get the idea, you've got this sort of uh, quintessential CEO type who has no regard or care for anything that's not making him money. No uh, sympathy for anybody who has uh, problems with themselves, problems with you know, mental health problems or, or family problems or literally any problems at all. No! I had no idea how to deal with this situation and all I had to do was hit it a lot. Ah. I'm not sorted that I took damage from the HP perspective, I'm sorted that I took damage from the fact that we had already done 30 without getting hit, so no, well, and it did really uh, get very much out of that one, don't mind. Um, yeah, do the, do the slow down thing before you try and do everything else. Um, you know, it's, it's a very, um, very entitled, like, 40 year old attitude where you've been around so long and you've earned a lot of money and you're a very important person because you're wealthy and you don't care that people have built-in problems that you know you've been running on easy mode for this entire game oh god help um and all of a sudden these people come along and expect some assistance you're a freaking invisible dude what is this all about is that even allowed? Uh, yeah, that attitude pre doesn't prevail on the internet, but it is certainly out. It certainly exists. Get off me. <laughs> that is probably the worst place you could ever have put. Wait, can I have this? Reel it, please? <laughs> Why? Why was that so unfair? It's fine. Uh, anyway, it's point being all these people it's so easy to produce a bad oh, that's burning so much less damage though these powerful grenades are powerful um the, these people just don't care <laughs> sorry to say so accessibility on the internet is by default poor Right, there's ways and means of creating a new website that is very accessible and you can present the information on the website in an accessible way. Uh, if you have the right information, like I'm saying, a game is not accessible information, but it's kind of not information, right? It's, a, it's interaction, it's, it's a thing, it's a, it's a game. I don't know if these are any good, by the way. Put in cells in them to check them off and see what we've got next. I'm gonna put 10 into here. I'd like this, but I don't necessarily want it to be unlocked right now. Um, what have we got from you? Yeah. Excuse me for sniffing once again. Um, what are we saying here? I don't know if I'm gonna get past this clock room, by the way, so this might be the end of all of this uh, particular tirade, but the point is that you can very, very easily put things on um, the internet, on the web, that people just don't know about. And therefore, uh, like, tracking you and, and, and watching you, and they are nefarious, they're evil and awful, and stop throwing bad things at you, bastard. Hey, 
Wait, why do you get a seal? Where's my seal? Stop hurting me. You don't last long on your old, uh, being, uh, frozen there, bro. Being honest. I kind of appreciate you were a little bit less, uh, less of a, a, a dick in that respect. Ooh. How dare you? Help. What are you doing? Some attacks I just can't read. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. What's happening? Who's winning? <laughs> I don't think it's me. <laughs> I really don't think it's me. It might be me. Who knows? It's gonna be close, but I don't think I'm gonna manage it. And I think it's simply because I can't uh, slow the bugger down. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Please be safe on the internet. The whole point of the tour network is that people can't track you. They can't figure out who you are and what you're doing based on what, you, what you're doing, based on what it looks like you're doing. They can't, <laughs> there's not enough information because they can't follow, they can't piece you together from all the, the data that's out there. This looks bad. So we might be able to buy one of the new stuff that we've got going on. Oh, that could be a good shield. Yeah, we'll try a shield run in the next episode. Thank you for watching this one. Thank you for listening to me talk about previously on the internet. That's probably uh, the most coherent I've ever been throughout an episode of Dead Cells. Um, and, of course, we didn't really finish the talk, but there'll be more to talk about next time, I'm sure. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. And I'll see ya. <laughs> Bad sign-off. <laughs>